Okay, we're going to do Lesson 74, Scientific Notation. Sorry I didn't get this video out to you earlier. Hopefully you tried the lesson, maybe read the lesson, and tried to understand it. Either way, I'd like you to watch the video so that you can see it again. And it's an important concept uh, that you'll use a lot throughout your math career, and especially if you go into any science fields like chemistry or physics or... Um, probably even biology, you'll run into a little bit of this. So, let's get started. Scientific notation is a way to write really big numbers or really small numbers in a compact way. Here we have two numbers that are written in scientific notation. Scientific notation is where you write the decimal point in between the first two non-zero numbers. We have this first number, 4.165, multiplied by 10 to the negative 7. Now, 10 to the negative 7 would be a really small number. So we're taking our number, we're multiplying it by something really small, below 1, so the number is actually going to get smaller. When the, no when the exponent is negative, the number is going to get smaller. So what we have to do is we take our number, and we put the true place of the decimal point. If we want to write it from... Um, scientific notation to standard notation, we take if the number is negative, it's going to be smaller, so we're going to move the decimal point seven places to the left. So we would need to have a placeholder. Let me just copy this over a little bit more. So we get 4.165, and we would move it over seven places to the left to make some placeholders. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So our decimal point goes right here, and we fill these in with zeros. And so you can see how small this number really is. It's point one two three four five six one four one six five. If this number was really, really big, you can see how we would have so many zeros that it would be a, a really take up a lot of space on your paper. So that's why they've come up with this notation that makes it more compact. Now this time we have 4.165 multiplied by 10 to the 7. We know 10 to the 7 would be a rather big number. So the number is going to get bigger, and how much bigger it's going to get? We're going to move our decimal place 7 places to the right to make it a bigger number. So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we fill in the zeros. You start where the decimal point is. We're not going to add 7 zeros. We're multiplying it by 10 to the 7. So we start where the decimal point is, and we move it over 7 spots. And so we get our number. It's 4165000. And you can read the number better if you put in commas every 3 spots. So it's 41,650,000. Okay, let's go the opposite way now. We're going to write a number in standard form in scientific notation. So this is a small number. We want to move the decimal point between the first and second non-zero numbers. So we're going to move our decimal point over that way. So we write, our we write it down. So um, let me just rewrite this. Two, three, three, one, six. So we want to move our decimal point over one, two, three, four places. So we're going to write it as 3.16 times... Now, here's the tricky part. You want to go from this number right here, your scientific notation, into this way, into that standard form. So, in order to do that, we're going to go from a bigger number to a smaller number, so we need it to be a negative. So, we moved it over 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's going to be negative 4. We always want to be able to take it from here back to our smaller number. So the confusing thing is, when you move the decimal point to the right to put it into scientific notation, it's going to be negative. Let's try another one. This one's a little tricky. I don't think I can read my number there. That's a 7. So we want to write this one in scientific notation, and it already looks kind of like it's in scientific notation, except for the fact that the decimal point isn't in between the first and second non-zero numbers. So we want our decimal point to end up right here. So we're going to have to move it over 1, 2, 3, 
four places to the right to get it into standard scientific notation. So that would be 3.16, and we moved it over 4 to the right. Remember I said when we move it to the right, we subtract. So we're going to have to subtract 4 from the 7 that's already there. So it's going to be 3.16 times 10 to the negative 11. Let's go the other direction. We are going to write this number in scientific notation. This time, we're going to get bigger. We need to get the decimal point right here, so we have to move it over. Actually, it's the same thing. We're moving it to the right. One, two, three, four. So this is actually the same thing. I don't give you very much variety in these examples. So we're going to move it over four places. So it's going to be 3.16 times 10. This time we again moved it over four places like last time, but we're starting with 7. So 7 minus 4 would be the third power. So that would be the answer to number 3. Let's try a couple more. They were all um, small numbers, and we're moving our decimal point to the right. All of those were moving to the right. Let's do these. Write these numbers in scientific notation. This one, our decimal point, looks like a normal number, but we can write it in scientific notation by putting the decimal point right there. So the decimal point starts right here. So we have to move it over to put it in the scientific notation one, two, three, four places. So we'll write our number as 4.78 times 10, and this time we moved our decimal point to the left, so we're going to add. It's going to be positive. I mean, 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 4. When you move it to the left, it's going to be positive, and when you move the decimal to the right, it's going to be negative. Let's try the next one. We're going to put this in the scientific notation. So the decimal point is starting right here, and we want to end up right here. So we're moving our decimal point to the left, so we're going to add that onto the exponent that's already there. So we're going to get, it's going to be 4.78 times 10, and we moved it over 1, 2, 3, 4 again. So this time we're going to add it, and it's going to be to the negative three power. Okay, last one. This one, the decimal point starts at the end, the right, and it's going to end up here. Again, we're moving it to the left, so it's going to be positive. One, one, two, three, four. So we're going to add four onto here, and we get 4.47, oops, 4.7, the enzyme of ignition times 10 to the 11th power. Alright, let's give you a couple to try on your own. Here you go. You can stop the video and see if you can put these in the scientific notation. Okay, hopefully you tried these, so let's see, let's see how you did. First one, the decimal point is here to start with. Here to start with, you want to move it over here, right there. So you want to move the decimal point to the left, one, two, three, four. Remember when we move it to the left, it's positive, and when we move it to the right, it's negative. So we would write that as 4.99, you don't put the zeros anymore, times 10 to the 4th. Let's try the next one. We want to move our decimal point from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, they really like 4 in this book. We moved it to the left, so it's positive. And so our answer is 4.99 times 
10 to the minus 7. And the last one, this time we're moving our decimal point to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember it has to be between the first and second non-zero numbers. So you get 4.99 times 10. We moved it over 4 to the right. The right is negative. So we're going to subtract 4. And that would be negative 1. So hopefully you got that, and if not, we'll go over on class on Friday. So that's it for Lesson 74.